All right, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Right, in this episode, we are hopefully, fingers crossed, going to get this P20 Let engine running. But before we can do that, we need to fit the turbo and quite a few little bits and pieces. So Liam, is, at the minute, is currently just stripping the turbo off because we're going to put new hoses on it. We're going to give it a quick clean, and then we can put it on. So we've got new silicon hoses to put on it, water feeds, new braided oil hose, and we're just going to give it a quick clean because it's a little bit dusty. So I've just taken in the turbo off, cleaned it out. There was a little bit dust in there, checked all in there. Got no gasket for this. I'm just going to use some gasket sealer essentially just to smear around the edge. Um, and then bolt it back together, put the new lines on, and away we go. So the intake to the turbo is held on with six M6 bolts. Now, I'll loosely put these on with the impact driver and then I'll torque them by hand afterwards. We then move on to the coolant lines. There's one on the front and there's one on the rear. These are bolted on a threaded union, nice and simple. And lastly, we fit the oil return part. This just pushes on and has a couple of Jubilee clips holding it. Now it's just a case of bolting the turbo to the cylinder head. It's held on with studs and nuts and we went for some new copper lock nuts and stainless steel washers. Liam then talked it down and I fit the stainless steel heat shield. That's the turbo done for now. Right, so I've just put the dizzy on, put the coil on, put the Bailey header tank on and waiting for the bolts to dry because we've painted it. Now we've just put the fuel lines on. Um, so we've put a union on there, got a bit of length of fuel pipe here. This is high pressure fuel pipe which just needs to connect into the proper line down here. And then same for the return. So we are getting there guys. Right, so we've done the fuel feed. We're now doing the fuel return, which is this pipe here. Just going to extend it by that much. As you can see, that's done nicely now. All clipped up. I can see to push that onto the union. A little bit awkward. That's the fuel lines all done. I'm really happy with the overall look and fit of these. I think they look really good. Right, Liam. Do you want to fire the fuel pump up? See if we've got any leaks. Yes, we do. <laughs> Might have even touched that. It's leaking out the end of the fuel rail. So it's leaking out of here. So there must be some kind of gasket or something on the end of that. It doesn't feel tight. It's not tight. It's finger tight, guys. So someone's had this apart. This is the problem when you buy engines in bits. I'll we'll just take it off and inspect it. There you go, so it's just a square o-ring gasket. Looks in pretty good order, to be fair. It's nice and clean. So I'd imagine all we need to do is tighten it up. Just to be sure, though, we're just going to go with some wet and dry to clean that face up. So I quickly clean this up, lubricate the seal, and bolt it back together. Just checking the other ends tight. All right, let's try again. That was the end thing. It looks like the leak is cured. So we're kind of getting close to a startup. I wanted to start it. However, the oil feed pipe for the turbo doesn't fit the union. It only just screws on. So I tried to tighten it up and it just ripped the threads out the end. So it only goes on a thread. That's the wrong one. This is off eBay. How much was it, Liam? About 80 quid? 60 quid? Yeah, a lot of money. Doesn't fit. We bought it months ago, so... Good luck with getting that sorted. But yeah, a bit frustrated. He's going to go to a local hydraulic place though and see if they can cut the end off and get something that will fix that. Because the um, the original C20 let one was knackered. But hey ho, we're now feeding the cables through the bulkhead. Liam's doing the clutch cable and I'm doing the throttle and the bonnet release. They're really tight and it's a little bit tricky, but we do get there in the end. Two days later, we managed to get a local hydraulic company to make up a new hydraulic line for the turbo feed. Most importantly, it fits the union perfectly and only costs 20 quid cash. I don't think the boss was about at the time. So I'm fitting the brand new braided oil feed line to the turbo. A couple of washers, copper washers these are. I'm gonna make sure they're nice and clean, as is the turbo, and it literally sandwiches between them. So the line goes over one washer. A little bit awkward. Like so, I'm going to put the top washer on, 
and then the locking nut. Basically a banjo setup, but it's a stud instead of a bolt. And it tightens with a 16mm spanner or socket, obviously. The rem fits on the back of the block here, and then that just tightens up with a 19mm spanner. So I don't want this with flapping around, so I'm going to use a P-clip just to secure it. I'll go into one of the sump bolts like that, I would imagine. Beautiful that. Right, I'm now going to put the elbow on the turbo and I'm going to use some brand new M8 bolts to do so. Now, you can get gaskets for these, but originally they didn't have one. It's literally just a, a machined face. Um, and they're both the same metal, so you shouldn't need a gasket in theory. We'll try it out. I'm using spring washers as well, just to try and keep it secure. Right, now that's tight, I'm going to put the lamp sensor in. This just tightens up with a 22mm spanner. So I've just clipped in the lamp sensor plug, which goes all the way around to it and plugs in near the ECU bulkhead plug. I now need to put the brake servo hose in, so it's got no vacuum leaks. I think this is a standard Nova GTE one. I'm pretty certain from memory they work, or they can work. This screws to the bottom of the inlet manifold. And then simply just plugs into the server. Lovely. So guys, I've just been doing the vacuum pipes and the pipe work. And this is quite complicated if you don't know what you're doing. So I just thought I'd show you how it should be. Um, just to try and make it a bit easier if you're doing it yourself. Right, so we've got a big large breather from the rocker cover which goes to the top of the turbo. And then that tees off, goes to the aim or valve. Now that's basically the waste. When the aimable valve loses the boost pressure, so it like dumps it off, it just puts it into here, straight back in the top of the turbo. So the fuel pressure regulator goes to the hot start valve, and then comes out the hot start valve and goes into one of the ports on the throttle body there. The right hand throttle body goes to the tank valve, which we won't be using, so that's just being plugged off. An AMOL valve, you've got one pipe which goes to the turbo actuator and the other pipe which goes across here and that goes to the turbo itself. So if you wanted to put a boost gauge in, for example, you'd want to take it from probably, you'd want to tee into one of these really. So it comes from the manifold. I hope that makes sense. Um, also, the ECU has a vacuum pipe going to it or a pressure pipe however you want to call it and that runs across here in the loom and then goes to the bottom of the throttle body down there which you can't really see but trust me it does i hope that's helpful i've just put some clips on these vacuum lines it's now time to put some oil in and we can start connecting some wires up and turn it over right i've connected the ec up i've connected the ignition feed to the ECU and I'll just put it on the battery for now. Fuel pump's wired up. Uh, everything's plugged in. I think we've got all the hoses on. So I think it should start now. I've cranked the engine. I've got the oil pressure up. Um, there's plenty of oil in the engine now. So should we give it a go? Whoa, that was a genuine first start. Right, I've just connected the intake to the turbo. It's not got an intercooler, but I've just kind of roughly put a pipe on just to give it another go, because obviously it's not going to run properly without that. So guys, as it's running, I've kind of proved the point. That's what I wanted to do in this video. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Next week's video, we're going to try and get it a bit more finished, shall we say. So hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more. See you later. Bye-bye.